your money. Now. I said now. George, listen to this. That creep Alonzo gets paroled today, that I means know. that I spent more time nailing him than he spent in the camp. Uh, what else is new? Are you coming to Revs after the shift? Oh, yeah, sure, but I gotta humiliate Jerry on the racquetball court first, get some of my poker money back. Hey, Jack, George. Good morning. You guys know anything about soccer? I'm trying to find the difference between a direct and an indirect free kick. Oh, don't ask me. Ask me about golf if you want to. Oh, I know. Try Lopez in narcotics. He should know that. I'm in trouble. My son Ryan's soccer coach has got appendicitis. I said I'd take his place. <laughs> Morning, Jean. So, Jack, I hear you and Liz are back together. Uh, yeah, she moved back in Friday. And uh, the fires are burning hot again. Hey, Jim, you know anything about soccer? Zip. OK, we got an armed robbery assault at a theater and an armed robbery at Belinda's modeling agency. I'll flip you for the models, Tom. You're on. Okay. Call it. Heads. Tails. All right. This is the guy the theater manager ID'd. Is this limousine thing a legit business? Oh, yeah, he's licensed, does the Oscars, the Emmys. Must do pretty well. Didn't even change the plates. Unit 24, request backup for arrest at 12601 Alador Avenue. 24, Roger, your request. 12601 Alador, standby. Tell me about this guy you're dating. Well, oh, he's really nice. You know, solid, divorced. And there's more. <laughs> okay, cover me now. Locks, man. I got it all. Let's roll, guys. Johnny Moore. What do you want? I'm Detective Williams. Is that your car? It's one of them. Please step over here. What for? You're under arrest for armed robbery and attempted murder. Step over here, please. Attempted murder? That's crazy. Look, I don't know nothing about this. I rent these cars out. It's my business. I got records. You want to see the records? I got dates and times. Look, I'll help you find this guy, OK? That's great. You can talk about it after you're booked. No talking. Keep moving. I've instructed my client not to talk to you unless I'm present. And I'm informing you that Mr. Moore is a legitimate businessman and will not tolerate harassment of any kind by the Los Angeles Police Department. 16000 dollars bail for attempted murder. Are you surprised? I planned that thing for weeks. Should have gone down, no problem. No, no witness, no case. That was the plan. It really screwed me up on this, Ramirez. Should have stayed there, finished the job, stuck to the plan. See, your cheekbones look higher. Changes the whole shape of your face. Try the mustache. Hmm, check it out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what do you think, sugar? Huh? How do you love me best? <laughs> See you later. 
All right. Now to business. I want to do that little jeweler number first, all right? Monday, Wednesday, Friday, at noon, he takes the samples, drives down Lindley, takes a left on Satakoy, straight into the Palm Plaza. Now, the plan is that we hit him here, right? Escape route down through here, we meet up here, there'd be a fresh car waiting. Who's that? That's my man, Lawrence, our new driver. He's late. He's a good man. He's got some talent. I sent him to steal us a taxi. Bring him in. Where'd you get the car? I'm at the company lot. Hot wire. Anyone see you? No. No, I was off the shift. No one would notice for 12 hours. They'll trace the plate. Plates off another taxi in for an engine job. Never miss it. Good. Good thinking. Come in. Come on. We're not some low-life band of outlaws. We've got class. We've got principles. We've got God on our side. We do his work. Redistribution of the wealth of this earth. You understand? Life teaches us that when we do things, we must do them right. Only three rules. No drugs. I don't tolerate nothing. Two, no screw-ups. Three, complete loyalty. We are family. Any questions? No, Mr. Moore. You should have seen him, Norma. Three big forwards coming in on him. Defense nowhere to be seen. They hammer one to the far side of the goal. Ryan makes this diving leap and gets a piece of it. What a great save. That is good, Ryan. Susan, come on, now. OK, I'm But I've let six go in the goal. No, who cares about that? It was a beauty of a save. Lewis is still in bad shape. I might wind up coaching all season. Really? Listen, can you take Susie to school? I've got to get to the office early. Sure, what's up? Oh, we're hiring junior loan officers. I've got to see about 30 MBAs before lunch. Not a problem. <sighs> Give me the jelly, you little mutt. Susan, you ready to go? Because I am running. What have you got on your face? All my friends have worn makeup for years except me. Susan, I want your face washed before you leave this house. I don't have time. There's time for that. Susie, first it's that I don't think you need makeup. You're so pretty, honey. And second, I've seen what happens to some girls that try to grow up too fast. I'm 17, Dad. Do you know that if we lived in India, I'd be considered like an old maid now? All right, all right, just a little makeup. Thanks, Daddy, you're the best. Oh, you can drop me right here at the corner. Mom always does. I'll walk. Right here? Why? Well, it's good exercise and, you know. You feel like a nerd with your parents driving you to school. Yeah, sort of. Bye, Daddy. Come on. Oh. Oh. pointed a gun at me and told me to give him the money. Then he fired a shot and I gave him the money. Then he fired two more times at me but missed. He was going to fire more, but he had trouble with the gun. He jumped in the car and drove off. I'm going to ask you in this preliminary hearing the same question I'll ask you in the trial. Is this gunman in the courtroom? Yes. He's that man, Johnny Moore. 
It'll be a pretty straightforward ID trial. We should put him away on your testimony. We'll see what the defense comes up with. God punishes those who lie. God punishes people who shoot at people and steal their money. Keep moving, Johnny. Get out of here. Taxi was stolen yesterday from the compound near 18th and Figueroa. Plates stolen. They dust for prints? They just left. We found two 9mm casings corresponding to the wounds in the body, but we haven't been able to find any witnesses. What, broad daylight, two shots fired, and no witnesses? They're all real spooks, Tom. Hi, you, uh, See the accident? No. You see the shooting? Hear the shots? No. How many men were there? Look, nobody saw nothing, all right? That's what they told us, or else I'll wind up like that guy. Nobody's looking for trouble, man. How about I subpoena you as a hostile witness? You want to waste your time? Feel free. You. Good, Ryan. That's much better. Heads up. Hey, good, good. Now remember, this time, bend your knees, on your toes, hands up. Hey! All right, that's okay. Good try, good try. Listen, I gotta go cook some burgers. You know, for a guy that's never played soccer, you showed me some dazzling footwork there. Hey, Dash, how come you're not wearing the uh, Philly apron? Oh, I don't know. You know, I like that Philly apron, but those ruffles, they tickle, Jack. <laughs> You know, I read the report on the jeweler's murder. That's nasty stuff, man. I think it's more again. You know, they hang out right down Ventura at the Reseda roller rink. Did you apply for some surveillance? Oh, those guys are so busy. I can't get them for a month. Well, it's only three weeks until you put more away for the Shepard thing. Well, at his rate, that's three more shootings. Work, 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 work. Norma, do you think the guys at your bank talk interest rates when they barbecue? I know they do. Mm. Honey? Let's get the on. Come on. Look, I'm going to talk to the chief and see if he can find a couple of guys to spring from the major crime unit for your surveillance. I could use the help, Jack. No more cop talk, OK? OK. We'll talk about knitting. Yeah. Carolyn, I'm going for a quick bite to eat. All right. Look at that, Tina. Walt Disney. Oh, boy. Now, there was one hell of an American. Yeah, the guy is incredible. How do you think of all that stuff, huh? Movies, cartoons, Disney Park. Oh. 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 Joe, 
it's Tom. Can you hear me? Not gonna testify. Don't worry about that, Joe. You just get better now. You'll be all right. You got 24 hours security. I'm sorry, Joe. I've got a key witness in intensive care. Let me have the surveillance unit for two weeks. They're gonna hit someone else. Tom, I got street gangs, arms dealers, some yahoo trying to carve up ladies along Ventura, not to mention narcotics. Ten days. Clay, they tried to kill my witness. Four. Eight. All right. Jack told me how much you want to get these guys. You can have a unit for one week, that's it. Nail them, will you? Thanks, buddy. Okay, watch this guy. Got him. Get ready now. Hold on, I'll wait for the signal. Mr. Schuster. Johnny, how are you? Okay, okay, how are you? Oh, just fine. Where you been? Oh, oh, great. I, I thought... False alarm, guys. Sorry. Over the front door. Turning into the mini mall, we'll go around the far side. Uh, the limo's parking. Pull over and keep him company. Down, make sure these kids are out of the way. We copy. This looks like the guy that runs a check cashing shop. Can you believe he's carrying the money with him? All units, this matches their MO. Get ready. Let's 
gone. We copy. Let's go. A few more days. I can't, Tom. What about Carstairs and Hogan? They just got requisitioned by narcotics. Big thing going on in Encino. Besides, your man goes to trial in a week. He's not going to do anything stupid. You don't know Johnny Moore. Robbery. Yes, he is. One moment, please. Tom, it's your son's school on line five. Tom Williams. I don't believe this. You stole the little girl's lunch money. Yes, sir. But why? Why would you do this? We give you an allowance. I don't know. I thought we were bringing you up right. This goes against everything I ever taught you. Don't you know I put people in jail for this? You can put me in jail? No, but you'll apologize to the girl's parents and to your mother. There'll be no television for a month. Daddy, do you still love me? Come here, come here, come here. I'll always love you, Ryan. That doesn't mean I'm letting you off the hook. We've got to talk about this, OK? OK. Come on. We are at H. Check cashing, corner of Sadiqua and Lindley. We have two women transporting to emergency. They just shot him down and took the cash. I watched while they planned this. How many men? I don't know. Could you identify them? No. Three to view a lineup. No! If we helped you, you could not protect us. Leave us alone! I swear I'm gonna get these guys. Hi, Tom. Joe. How are you keeping? On the mend. Got a steel plate in my head's gonna give me trouble at airports and a bad need for a good steak they won't let me have, but it could have been worse. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah. That's why I'm not gonna testify. I understand. I don't blame you. I'll get to more gang. Maybe not on your case, but uh, one way or the other. See, I got to. They did another number today. They shot up an old couple. They won't testify either. I told them all about our new witness protection program. All expenses paid, I'd be personally responsible for their safety before and during the trial, but... Uh, they're not interested. They're old. See, all I need is one witness. Well, anyway, don't you be chasing those, uh, those nurses too much now. And uh, if you get really crazy, you call me. I'll, uh, I'll sneak in a steak. Take care, Joe. Just talked to Ramirez's girlfriend. He's been arrested for armed robbery. Willoughby and some other guy over on Wilshire. So much for loyalty. That's what he gets. Bam! This is a bad luck day. Ramirez gets arrested. Those old Chinese live. We need better pieces, automatics. The movie guy won't die. He'll never testify. Shepard ain't the problem. It's that cop, Williams. Without him, the whole case would fall apart. Williams is our bad luck. First order of the day. We gotta get rid of the bad luck. Watch the ball, defense! Come on, spread out! Ryan, they're coming at you on your toes. Good, good man. What's up, coming at you. Yes! Good 
Tom, you did it. You read a couple of books, you turned yourself into a soccer coach. It's amazing. Jack, never underestimate the power of a library card. Yeah, I gotta go. Good luck with the game. Hey, you can't go now. It's one to one. No, I'm gonna meet some guys from Wilshire. We're gonna try and get in nine holes. Good luck. All right, thanks. I'll see you later. All right, guys, come on, come on. Life teaches us we must do these things. <laughs> nice putt. <laughs> Saw a bumper sticker the other day. It said something like, time spent playing golf is not time taken off your life. It's a bonus. Well, we should do this more often, then, because I could use a bonus. How are things going in the Crosby murder? Uh, you know, it's the same old story. Strong suspect, but not enough evidence to charge. Then, you can't get a wiretap, can't get a search warrant. Sometimes you wonder which side the law is on. I hear you. Hell, I mean, even if you get a conviction, it doesn't mean a damn thing. I finally put Vince Arnold away. He gets out on a weekend pass. He kills three people. Same thing with Kanzette, kills one person. Then Weatherby had his conviction overturned last Thursday. I spent eight months solid on that case. Sometimes you just feel like packing it in. Yeah, I know what you mean. You're not serious, are you? Maybe I am. I mean, what am I doing this for? I've got an ulcer, I get migraines, I've got a marriage that's hanging by a thread. What are you gonna do? Security consulting? Write crime novels, open a bar somewhere? Maybe, maybe I will. You all get out of here. Look, look. I know the system has glitches, but on some basic level it works. I believe that and so do you. What is your occupation, Mr. Bedecki? I'm a security guard at the Reseda Roller Rink. And do you know the uh, defendant, Johnny Moore? Yes. I see him hanging out at the rink. But like, you know, we're not the closest friends or anything. As you know, we're interested in your activities on the night that Joe Shepard was assaulted. Do you recall what you were doing that night? Yes, I had a party at my house. At what time was the party? First people got there about nine, went to maybe four or five. And can you tell the court if Mr. Moore was present at your party that night? Yes, Mr. Moore was at my party. At what hours do you remember him being there? He was there from the beginning to the end. Thank you, Mr. Bedecki. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Bedecki, how many people were at your party? About 20 or so. Is this a list of the people that were at your party? Some of them, yes. And is this the list that you supplied to Detective Williams? Yes. No further questions. Your Honor, I would like to call Detective Tom Williams to the stand. Oh, that's the time is late, Ms. Bird Hopkins. Let's save Detective Williams until the next session. Court's adjourned. 10000 dollars Rick. I want him dead. Call me when it's done. back two hours ago. Well, maybe he ain't coming back tonight. Family home? Yeah, I could see him inside. You want me to take them out? No, 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 no. I'm not paying for killing no family. The cop first. Come on back here now. Yeah, OK. What time he pick his kid up from school? Every day, 4.45.
Bridge right over there. We'll get him, regular drive-by. No, we missed him. He's right there, it'll be easy. Do it. I said no. That's not the way Johnny wanted it. We stick to the plan. You all are gonna let me go to jail. And if I go to jail, we lose everything we got. We could have taken him. I wanted to, but Fortino said no. It wasn't the plan. To hell with the plan. He was there. We had the opportunity. Davis was ready, right, Davis? Hey, Fortino was calling the move. All right, all right. Shut up, shut up. I want to change the plan. Lawrence, Fortino tells me you've been doing a good job as a driver. Are you a shooter? I give you a great honor. Get rid of my bad luck. You do this, I make you my right hand. Same setup tomorrow. So Mr. Bedecki furnished you with a list of the people at his party. Did you contact them? Yes, I was able to contact 12 of the 16 names given. And did they tell you that Johnny Moore was at the party? No, not one could recall seeing Mr. Moore at the Bedecki party. In fact, seven made the statement that he was not at the party. Thank you, Detective Williams. Well, it sounds to me like you've buried the only defense witness, Tom. I guess. But we're not gonna get a conviction without Shepard's testimony. He's the only eyewitness. He still hasn't committed? Giving him the whole sermon. Well, he'll come around. People do things for you. Jack, the man took five bullets. I'm still working on it. You ready? Playing this game today? Come on, come on. Come on, open up. Hey. Hey, big guy. Not with the kidney. I can't. God hates the coward line. Get him out of here, Fatino. You bitches ain't no better. Hi, and you forgot your backpack. Honey, you're going with me. Tom, when are you getting the bike? Night before his birthday. I don't want him finding it. OK, fire engine red, right? No, no, candy apple red. Dad, um, it's Halloween tonight, and there's this really special party at City Whiteheads. And there's no school tomorrow, so do you think I could stay out until 2? Two? 2 o'clock? It's Halloween. Oh, I'm sorry, Susan. But th the party doesn't even hardly start until, like, midnight. And you can come home at 12.30. It's not even worth going. Why do you always have to be such a cop? tell the court when the assailant shot at you. Did you believe his intent was to kill you? Was he attempting to murder you? Yes, I believe he was. Now, Mr. Shepard, can you identify the man who stole your money at gunpoint and who fired at you with intent to kill? Yes. It was Johnny Moore. The prosecution rests, Your Honor.
It's a nice little house. It's a good town. Should be all right. Joe, I'm sure we're going to get a conviction on your testimony. I truly believe you saved a few lives today. Absolutely. Well, I don't know about that, but I do know I'll sleep better now. Thank you, Joe. Thanks. Take care, Joe. Hold it a second, sir. <laughs> you don't understand. I, I have a plate in my head. Mm -hmm. No, I really do. Sure. looks like right after he killed the cop. Come on, man. You screw up the initial questioning, you could blow the whole case. You'll have your chance. Why did it have to be Tom Williams? Damn it. Why Tom? Come on, let's get out of here. George, what do we got? Not much. Only witnesses are kids. They don't know what they saw. They haven't found the card, let alone the gun. Here they are. 
five months of Tom's investigation of the Moore gang, and there's photos, records, activities, arrests, charges, and convictions in chronological order. There are entries on Moore coming in right up to yesterday. Meetings, movements, telephone calls. Oh my God. Tom was investigating the preparations for his own murder. Thank you, Gene. Four person of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. The defendant will rise. How do you find the accused on the charges? On the charge of armed robbery, we find the defendant guilty. On the charge of assault with a deadly weapon, we find the defendant guilty. On the charge of attempted murder, we find the defendant not guilty. At this time, I would like to thank the jury for their patient and diligent consideration of the facts in this case. How long will he get? With the court Without attempted, he could be out in 36 months. Bailiff will take Mr. Moore to the county jail. Court's adjourned. Who was that girl? He's a college student. Tanner's assistant. You gonna be all right, Mason. Come on, Jack. I'm sure Liz wants you home. She's not there. She left. Sorry, I didn't know. It's okay. It's been a couple of weeks. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. All right. Good night, George. We're going to get through this. Oh. Ryan, honey. OK. Remember this day. Remember it well. More than a 1,000 law enforcement officers attended the the service was held at Our Lady of the Valley Catholic Church in Noble Park. Police officers wore black ribbons around their badges in honor of their slain comrade. During the eulogy, the department chaplain spoke to William's six-year-old son, Ryan, about how his father died. Ryan, when that terrible thing occurred, your dad had one thought going through his mind, your safety. Tom Williams knew someone was trying to kill him. But before he died, he saved his son's life. And when we return, we'll show you the latest footage on that small fire below Mount Wilson. Firefighters were able to contain the flames by the staff. What do you know about the hit on Detective Williams? I don't know anything about Detective Williams. You 
You're saying you never heard of him? Oh, I heard of him. He was putting the charge on Johnny. So Johnny wanted to kill him? I don't know. Ask Johnny. I'm asking you, jerk. And I said I don't know. Do you understand conspiracy to murder Fortino? It means you're in as much trouble as Johnny. And you could get a life sentence without possibility of parole if you don't talk to us. Now, did Johnny plan the hit on Detective Williams? I don't know what you're talking about. This is just a question of time, JJ. This ain't gonna go away. Sooner or later, somebody's gonna crack. Yeah, somebody will cut a deal, and they'll point the finger, and you're gonna go to jail forever for conspiracy. So tell us what happened. Yeah, I ain't arrested. I don't have to listen to this. Out of here. We're doing you a favor. <laughs> I got nothing to say. So what? Haven't you learned anything at all? Anything? We're getting all kinds of information coming in all the time. We're bound to get a break soon. Have you gone back to work? No, I can't. Susan is barely able to function. There's something I just can't get her to talk about. And Ryan's having nightmares. His birthday is this week, and I don't even know if he can handle it. Is there anything I can do to help? Yeah, you can get the guy that killed Tom and ruined our lives. Hit him where he can't ever do that to anyone else. Hi, Norma. Hi, George. They just arrested Ricky Davis for armed robbery. This could help us. All right, so, Ricky, what do you figure? 10 to 15? You're gonna be an old man before you get out of here. Can you cooperate a little bit with us? I tell you, I don't know nothing about the Williams murder. Detective Williams. Detective Williams. Say it. Detective Williams. Yeah, you're a friend of Johnny Moore's, aren't you? Yeah, so? So when's the first time Johnny Moore talked about killing Detective Williams? He didn't. I don't know. Look, Johnny's got power. Just because he's on the inside doesn't mean he can't operate. He's right here in this jail. So forget it. Well, we can offer you protection. All you gotta do is decide between him and us. I've got nothing to say. Oh. Well, then I gotta do what I gotta do. You know, I've been a cop a long time, Ricky. I've been a cop? Since you were a little kid. And as soon as you walk out of this room, I'm gonna put it to you. It's all yours. I'll be seeing you, Ricky. Kid's dynamite. We're in great shape now. Oh, man, I gotta get me a newspaper, see what they're saying about me. <laughs> hey, man, you hear me? I'm talking to you. I hear you. What you doing in here anyway? You killed somebody? My school teacher. <laughs> you killed a school teacher? <laughs> he used to bug me a lot in the class. So one day, I broke her neck. <laughs> What'd you do? <laughs> Killed a cop. Yeah, but my man thinks I'm gonna get off. No one will testify. <laughs> my man.
Dave, I hear they're coming for you, man. When you sleep. Take care. Thanks. I want protection until the trial. And no new charges if I talk. Immunity, okay? What do you got? He was doing a trial when Johnny saw we were being watched. He said he wouldn't go to jail if Detective Williams was dead. So Johnny sent us to find out where he lived, where his kids go to school, where he stopped for coffee, what time he came home. We made a couple of tries. Last time we were all lined up, but Armstrong. Lawrence Armstrong? Yeah, couldn't pull the trigger. Next day, Johnny decided to do it all himself. Johnny Moore shot Detective Williams. Yeah. You're gonna show us this house, and I'm gonna find out if you're messing with me. Take the next right. Is this the street? Make another right. That's it. That's it. The tan one. Johnny brought me here before. Said he'd give me 10000 to kill a guy when he came home. OK. You say you called him from a payphone? Yeah. It's a couple of blocks down. I couldn't see the house when I talked to him. OK. Here's the call to Moore, October 27th, 10.45 PM. OK. I was getting shaky by then. Glad he decided not to do the family. What did you say? When I called, we talked about doing the family. Then Johnny said he wasn't paying for no family. First, the cop. The family? He was going to kill the whole family? Don't know. Johnny's pretty crazy sometimes. First, the cop. Now, to me, that implies the family later. Your Honor, Moore is perfectly capable of directing hits on witnesses and enemies from jail. His attorney would raise absolute hell. Uh, Your Honor, excuse me, Your Honor, but this guy has already tried to kill one witness, and I've got an informant that says he personally hit Tom Williams. Put him in solitary for one week, and I'll get more. I'm sorry, gentlemen. We just don't have the legal grounds. Three to two? That's a heck of a lot better than like 10 to two or something. Have you played those guys before? Yeah, they always beat us. Oh, yeah? Well, oh, uh, wait, your mother's cleaning the floor or something. She said go around the back. Uh, what was the score last time? Four nothing. Well, you see there, this is closer, so next time maybe you'll beat them. I did make a couple of good saves. Did you? Well, that's good, because a save is just as important as a goal. In fact, anybody can kick the ball through for a goal, but only one guy, the goalie, can make a save. Next time, we're going to beat him by four, maybe five. Surprise! Happy birthday, Ryan. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, good old big guy.
911. Yeah, police? Yes, it is. May I help you? I know something about a murder. Yes. What murder? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, thanks, man. Great, great. What are you doing, Lawrence? I made a call, man. My man's got some tickets. Lawrence. Don't you know if nobody talks, John? I'll be free in a couple of years. You know that? Yeah, yeah. Excuse me, man. Sorry. But you're the problem. You're the weak link. We both have to So J.J. Barlow always supplied the weapons? Yeah, that's right. Fatino did a couple of times, but for the Williams sit, it was always J.J. Where's the gun that killed Detective Williams? I don't know. J.J. would keep him somewhere. Just before a job, he'd call and then go and get him. After, he'd call again and then drop him off. And you never saw where he took him? Well, he took me along once, but I don't remember where. Don't screw around with us, Armstrong. Answer the question. I don't remember. A house somewhere in the hills. OK, wait, hold it here. There's a phone call here from Moore's house 40 minutes before and then again 25 minutes after Tom's murder to Rich Adderley, 1052 Beachmont Avenue. Is this the house where he kept the guns? Yeah. You sure? Yeah, this house. OK, let's go get a search warrant. Got your cold, JJ. You're going up for murder one. A police detective in cold blood. You're gonna get the gas, Barlow. Wasn't me, I swear. I got it for Johnny. I gave it to Johnny. You gonna swear to that in court? Yeah. Johnny Moore, I take great pleasure in charging you with the first degree murder of Detective Thomas Williams. Gotcha, Johnny. Are you going to stay with us a long time? Just till we're sure you're safe. Here we go. Norma, I noticed the uh, paint's a little rough out back. The house could use a coat. No, I don't want to paint the house. It's... Why would I paint the house? No, I mean, we would do it. <sighs> of course not, Cliff. Look, thanks, but you guys have been doing enough, OK? Hi, can I help you? I'm Shirley Stout. I called yesterday. Oh, yeah. Come on in. I've been trying to pack up some stuff. Somebody said I should. I don't want to. It's been sitting here for days. I guess eventually I'll get to it. So, um, see, I've got this little technique. I, um, I don't really let myself quite believe it yet. It's just a way on a trip or something. I'm going to hold on to that for a while. I remember when I packed away all of Paul's stuff, his photographs and awards and certificates. About a couple of months ago, I pulled him out and put them all up again. And what the hell, I'm proud of him. There are a couple of us that get together every once in a while. We're all wives of murdered cops. We don't like the term widows. Would you like to meet the others? It'd be good for you. No, no, I don't think so. Not now. You know, there is something, though. There, um, there's a part of me that I've never really felt before. When I think of Johnny Moore, I want him dead. I want him dead and gone off the face of the earth. We all felt that way. But it will eat you up. It will eat up your whole life for yourself and for your kids. You have got to try. 
to get that anger, that bitterness, all that stuff. You've got to try to put it behind you. I'm not ready yet. Oh, hi. Will you sit with me? Well, I, well, I would, but they won't let me in there because I'm a potential witness and working on the case. Are you sure you feel up to this? I'm not sure what I'm up to. Now, the murder of Detective Williams is unique in the annals of police history. Approximately 160 police officers fall every year in the line of duty nationwide. Most gunned down in a violent confrontation with a criminal element. But Detective Williams was stalked, surveilled, and selected. A calculated, cold-blooded, premeditated act of vengeance against a police officer who had merely done his job too well. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, under our system of justice, my client, Johnny Moore, is presumed innocent. Innocent. That is where you must begin if you are to live up to your oath as jurors. Now, I sympathize with the prosecution in their predicament. Great pressure has been brought to bear on them for a conviction in this horrible case. And I understand the things they will resort to. I understand it, but I do not condone it. I submit that the state's case will rest completely on evidence you will hear given by a band of thieves and criminals who are making deals, trying to save their own necks. Now, the most important question you must later ask yourself is, has the state proven beyond a reasonable doubt the guilt of my client, Johnny Moore? I submit to you, they will not. Garrett, have a look at this. Your Honor, this notice, which is being circulated by the friends of Johnny Moore, offers a $10,000 reward for anyone, and I quote, with information leading to the arrest of the Latinos and Caucasian men that killed Detective Tom C. Williams, and for anyone with information as to why the witnesses Davis, Armstrong, and Barlow would lie on Johnny Moore. Now, it is the prosecution's position that this notice constitutes an open contract for a hit on these witnesses. Your Honor, that is ridiculous. This notice is an absolutely innocent attempt by Mr. Moore to obtain evidence. Furthermore, the prosecution requests that so these witnesses will not be intimidated, Mr. Moore be placed in solitary confinement and bar him from any further communication except with his attorney for the duration of the trial. Your Honor, this is ludicrous. I'm sorry, Mr. Jamison. I must deny your request. The man's conducting a campaign of intimidation. You have insufficient legal grounds for such a conclusion. I'm sorry. Mr. Barlow, I want you to inspect this automatic assault pistol. You recognize it? Not sure. Not sure? We have your signed statement witnessed by Detective Lowe and Rivera. Objection, Your Honor. I'd like that statement stricken from the record. Sustained. Jury members, please disregard that last statement. Why don't you take another look, Mr. Barlow? Isn't this the weapon fully loaded that you gave to Johnny Moore on the day he went to kill Tom Williams? Objection! Sustained. Be more careful in your statements, Mr. Jameson. Mr. Barlow. Mr. Barlow! Isn't this the same weapon that you gave to Johnny Moore on the day Tom Williams was killed? I don't know. Excuse me, Your Honor. May I approach the bench? I'm sorry, Your Honor, but there is a show of emotion in the courtroom which I believe will bias the jury. Now, I can understand how difficult this is for Mrs. Williams, but in the interest of justice for my client, I must move to have her barred from the courtroom. Your Honor, it's all right. I'll go. I 
I'd like to request a recess, Your Honor. Court adjourned till 2 p.m. We are gathered here in the sight of God to join this man and this woman together in the state of holy matrimony. Who has the ring? Right here. Janie Wickshaw, do you take Johnny as your lawfully wedded husband? I do. And do you, Johnny, take Janie as your lawfully wedded wife? I do. I now pronounce you husband and wife. He did establish it as the murder weapon, and it was in the possession of Barlow, who supplied the guns to Moore. Yeah, but it's still not a direct link. My husband is innocent. It's been a frame-up. And who do you think framed him? The police, the prosecution, everybody. But I'm confident the jury will see this. And when will you get a honeymoon? Johnny's serving time on some other minor charges, but it looks like he'll be out soon enough. Then we'll go somewhere very private. Davis and Armstrong have received threats, and they've seen the reward notice. They're refusing to testify. What? They can't do that. What's going on? Well, we've got a little problem here. How's it going? Not bad, Jack. And you? Never better. Anton, um, we've always been straight with each other, right? I've been straight with you. I want to ask you something. You're in a cell with Johnny Moore. Did he ever talk to you about Detective Tom Williams? All the time. He told me he killed him. Anton, I got no deal for you. You're a lifer. You're never going back on the street again. I was just answering your question. Yeah. D did he give you any details? Do you think you could testify in court for me? Can't do it. This is where I live. Yeah. I hear you. Jack, would you do me a favor? Get him out of my cell. He's starting to bug me. I'll do what I can. But listen, I want you to think about this for me. This guy Moore wanted to kill the kid, too. That just ain't right.
All I'm saying is it's got to be finished before the marble gets here. Detective Lowe? I'm yes. Leo Schuster. Thanks, sir. How are you? This is Detective Rivera. How do you do? You know who Janie Wickshaw is, right? I do. You say she came to your house? Said she was a messenger from Johnny Moore. I hired Johnny a few times as my driver. He was dependable, intelligent. At one point a few months ago, he had asked if I wanted to invest $65,000 in his business. He wanted to buy another limousine. I told him I'd think about it, but I had no real interest. Next thing I know, this Janie Wickshaw girl comes to me and asks for money. She said something real bad would happen to me if I didn't pay up. I thought she was joking. But she showed a list and said I'd believe it when some of the others start to die. I wrote down the ones I could remember. Davis, Armstrong, Barlow, Jack Lowe. Prosecutor Jameson. I'll call Garrett Jameson, tell him a protection unit is on the way. Yeah, here we both made the hit parade. Judge Goldstein just called. She decided to grant our request and place more in solitary confinement. No paper, pencils, calls, or visitors other than his attorney. Garrett, that's great. Maybe we can start turning this thing around. Hey, what's going on? What is this, huh? Huh? What's going on? I want to call my attorney. I have the right to call my attorney. I want my attorney right now. You get him on the phone. Call my attorney. I'm not going in there. I'm not going. I'm not going to call my attorney. I'm not going in there. No. No. You get that man on the phone. You get him on the You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. I got you. You're dead. All right, look, I've got Moore in solitary, and I mean for good. His power is gone. He's not giving any orders, he's not paying for any hits, and everyone on the street knows this. I'm the one with the power now. So? So from now on, when this man asks you questions in court, I want straight answers. No more of this crap. Hi. Jack, hi. Hey, Cliff told me he offered to help you here, but you threatened to drench him when he asked. Oh, I'm getting a <laughs> reputation, huh? Yeah, well, it's understandable. How are you? Same. I packed up some of his things, and uh, they've been here for a week. I don't know whether to throw them out or give them to the Salvation Army or put them back up where they belong. I guess they'll just sit here forever. Well, let them sit. The truth is, I'm just barely treading water. I'm not a helpless person, you know. I had a job. I could make things work. Now I can't do anything. I can't even go to court. That's why I came over, Norma. I think you should go back to court. Here's why. This guy Moore's got his whole family in there every day. And believe it or not, it's getting him points. Well, Jack, I want to be there. I'm just not sure if it's the best thing. I mean, these days, Cliff offers to grill me a hamburger and I'm crying. Involvement would be the best thing for you, Norm. I know it's the best thing for our case, and I think it's what you really want. Yes, I want to go back to court. I just don't want to screw up again. You want me to come with you? Would you? Oh, that would be great. I'll see you tomorrow. Your Honor, 
Norma Williams is present in the courtroom, and I would ask that the court order be enforced. What court order, Counselor? I never ordered Norma Williams from the court. She went voluntarily and is free to return. And frankly, I'm glad she has. Let's go. Your Honor, before the jury returns, my client wishes to make a statement. Proceed. As God is my witness, I have been horribly mistreated. I have been put in a hole with no access to my new bride or my, my brother or my aunt. It smells bad and I can't see the sky. I am innocent and I don't accept this. I am asking the court to reinstate my privilege of an open cell, exercise periods, visitors, and the use of a telephone. Denied. On to business. Yes, it's true. The defendant offered me 10000 to kill Detective Tom Williams. And is it also true that on three separate days, you were on stakeouts organized by Johnny Moore with the express purpose of murdering Tom Williams? Yes, it's true. So you're telling me that Johnny Moore gave you the weapon and ordered you to kill Detective Williams in front of that school? For how much? $10,000. $10,000. It's a lot of money. You had the loaded weapon. You had Tom Williams in your sights. Why didn't you pull the trigger? His son was in the car. His son was smiling up at him. I couldn't do it. Now, Mr. Barlow, you recognize this weapon, don't you? Yes. To whom did you give this weapon on October 31st? To Johnny Moore. Did he tell you exactly what he was going to do with the weapon? Yes. <clears throat> he said he was going to kill Tom Williams. Mr. Barlow, I believe you as well as Mr. Armstrong and Mr. Davis are currently under indictment for some very serious crimes. Is that true? Yes, sir. And Mr. Barlow, do you believe that your present testimony will help in your personal case? Objection. Sustained. Johnny told me he got the Mac-10 ready on the seat. When Detective Williams came around the truck, he drove by, stopped, and fired from close. He said that when he started blasting on him, his legs went this way, his arms went that way. He laughed when he told me this. Johnny said he picked the gun up again. Even though he knew the man was dead, he fired another burst into him. He looked for his little boy to blast him too, because he said, he probably grew up to be a cop, just like his father. But he didn't see him. He started his car again, and it started, and he drove away. Mr. Reddick. Why do you expect us to believe that Johnny Moore told you all this? I don't know. Or perhaps more to the point, why are you telling us this? Have you been promised something for your cooperation? No, I, I wasn't promised anything. Then why, Mr. Reddick, would you possibly be so helpful to the people who would sentence my client to death? Anyone who would go to kill a little kid? Maybe he should die. 
Four person of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Will the defendant please rise? Will you please read the verdict? On the charge of first degree murder and conspiracy to commit the murder of Detective Tom Williams, we find the defendant, Johnny Moore, guilty. There you go. Court is adjourned pending sentencing. We go. Stay strong, Questions. No, honey, not in court. Will I have to do anything? No. I just want you to sit quietly and listen. And remember. I will, Mama. Okay, honey. You look very handsome. Go get your coat. I'm not going. Susan, we're in this thing. You can't turn your back now. I want you to be there. I just can't. I can't go there and see that man and think about what he did to dad. You've got to learn to face the evil in this world, just like daddy did. There's something that I didn't tell you. We argued that last day, the last time that I saw him. I said some really stupid things. I can't even remember the last time I told him that I loved him. And now he's gone. Honey, your daddy loves you so much. Do you think one conversation could change that? Susie, I want you to come to court. On October 31st, last year, at 5.40 p.m., my life and the lives of my children were shattered. Tom was my best friend, my lover, and the best husband any woman could ask for. I kept asking myself, how could this happen? How could anyone do this? But now I have seen Johnny Moore, the animal who has done this thing, and who sits there smugly without any display of remorse. And no matter what happens to this man, for us, the pain and anguish of losing Tom will continue. Every holiday, every birthday, every Father's Day, every wedding anniversary, and every Halloween for the rest of our lives. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Your Honor, I'm Susan Williams. I'd like to say something. All right. Please. My father was a brave, loving, caring man. We had a bond that could never be broken. He was always there for me when I needed him, but not anymore. Now he's gone. He will never be with me for my prom or my graduation or for my wedding day because of what this man has done. I'm very proud of my dad for who he was and what he stood for. And 
I will always, always love him. Thank you. I've been praying for Norma Williams and her children, and I don't blame them for what they say. I, too, have known pain. God knows. But this verdict was calculated before this trial even started. I was convicted before I was even tried. I am not without sin, but neither are all of you. Now, I just hope you can reach a decision on my sentence that you can live with. My life is on the line. This is for real. Now, some of you people look religious. When you stand before God, at the end of your journey, if you decide to execute me, I want you to think, what is going to be your closing argument to him? Johnny Moore was sentenced to execution by gas. He is on California's death row. The Medal of Valor, the LAPD's highest award for bravery, was awarded posthumously to Tom Williams for saving his son's life. With the active participation of Norma Williams in the campaign, California became the first state to ban sales and possession of assault weapons, including the MAC-10 that killed Tom Williams. On May 20th, 1992, Ryan Williams joined the Police Explorer program with the Los Angeles Police Department. He hopes to become a police officer.